Our top story tonight, the White House has released several statements saying it strongly disagrees with an abortion drug ruling. Yesterday, an appeals court decided mifepristone should only be handed out by doctors, not mail orders. That said, the ruling is on hold until the U.S. Supreme Court weighs in. White House correspondent Owen Jensen reports. Owen. Tracy, the White House keeps trying to expand what it calls abortion access. That's why the Biden administration is so worried about these potential pro-life protections. Vice President Kamala Harris quickly responds to the debate over an abortion drug. She wants mifepristone to be easily distributed to women through the mail. She complains the court's latest ruling would impose medically unnecessary barriers to safe and effective FDA-approved medication, and she calls it a threat to a woman's freedom to make decisions about her own body. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre adds, due to the Supreme Court's stay, mifepristone remains broadly available for now, but if the Fifth Circuit's ruling stands, it will significantly roll back the ability for women in every state to get the health care they need. But pro-life groups were quick to praise the court ruling. Students for Life President Christian Hawkins writes, the abortion extremists in the Biden administration through the FDA deliberately allow women to be exposed to injury, infertility, death, and abusers with their online distribution scheme. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden heads to Scranton, Pennsylvania to mourn the death of family friend Ellen Casey, who's being remembered at the Catholic Cathedral, telling reporters... She's an incredible woman, and she raised an enormously successful and decent family. The president finishing the day in Maryland, where he'll host a trilateral summit tomorrow at Camp David with the leaders of Japan and South Korea. Protesters in South Korea don't like the summit's military deterrence plan. Past efforts to tighten security cooperation between Seoul and Tokyo have progressed with fits and starts. The Prime Minister of Japan spoke before departing for the United States. He believes it's important for the three countries to meet now. The big worries are North Korea's nuclear threats and China's military activities in the Indo-Pacific. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the summit will help make the Indo-Pacific, quote, free and open, prosperous, secure, resilient, and connected. At the White House, Owen Jensen, EWTN News Nightly.